Bonjour à tous. Euh, <coughs> j'ai compris que c'était une réunion internationale aujourd'hui, donc euh, j'ai préparé mon intervention en anglais. Mais euh, rassurez-vous, euh, comme tout Français, j'ai toujours un très fort accent, donc il euh, n'y aura pas de problème, je crois, de communication. Uh, all of us in this room have the chance, and I would say even the privilege, to be instrumental in the development of a global new way of life that is the information society. We are living a change which I believe is equivalent to the industrial revolution and we are all, I believe, so much excited to extend again and again the scope of our services, our contents, and our products. Now, this is really great. However, we should not forget that the end goal of the information society is ultimately a better life for everyone. And from this aspect, we should remember we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to make it happen, first of all, but we also have a responsibility to make sure that it benefits to everyone. The information society is not only limited to entertainment. It also permits to improve people's health through remote medical advisors, to have access to new education opportunities, and to deliver government services. In fact, the, the list itself is endless. And we all have to fight against the exclusion of some categories or some countries from the information society. You know, this is what we call the digital divide. In a way, I would say that uh, the digital divide is a form of discrimination dividing the rich and the poor, the same way as we had in the past, and unfortunately still have in some countries, a food divide in an agriculture, agricultural society or a welfare divide in an industrial society. But, of course, I will not talk too much about the uh, digital divide itself, uh, but uh, exclusion can also come from our product and our services. And we have both a challenge and a responsibility to deliver content that are adapted to everyone, not simply the majority of the population that benefits from all its potential. This is what we call the accessibility, which I believe is part of a digital divide. This means that uh, all the actors, product producers, content product, uh, providers, broadcasters, should be conscious that an important minority of a population might have difficulties to have access to <coughs> products which are designed by young, creative, healthy engineers somewhere in the laboratory. If we do not want the digital divide to also viciously split our countries, we need to offer products and services available also to elderly people, to disabled people, and to all of us who can have a weakness. All in all, it represents, we know, about 40% of the population. So I know that uh, the legislation goes into these directions in many countries, but you know, more than a matter of law, it's also a matter of corporate social responsibility for all of us. So it is our duty to include accessibility in our business chain from the very beginning to the very end. Accessibility should be first addressed from start in the content development process so that it is taken into consideration at every stage of a content business chain creation, content adaptations to specific delivery platforms, 
content retrieval and playback. Also, accessibility should be first addressed from the start by the hardware manufacturers at the level of the product design. In fact, the, the standard committee of the uh, International Electrotechnical Commissions uh, already uh, includes a checklist for product developers to consider accessibility needs in the product design process. Now, a typical example of that is the audio description device that has been implemented I must say, in the Sony TV sets, and from this aspect, I am proud that uh, we are a market leader. I'm not necessarily a market leader now for everything, but at least in this field. This type of system is a great progress because it permits sight impaired people to follow a television program through a background description activated by a button on the remote controller or through a, a digital menu. <coughs> However, these audio descriptions can work only if the broadcasters and the content producers provide services which are compatible with such a service. Of course, the two goes together. Does that uh, improve anything if we make TV sets with an audio description and that there is no broadcasting in audio descriptions? Uh, I must say that uh, there are a lot of progress also into these directions. Maybe not enough, not quick enough, but uh, you know, a number of uh, uh, broadcasters have committed on a voluntary basis to increase audio descriptions in the UK on all or most of their channels to about 20%. This includes, in fact, in the UK, the BBC, ITV1, uh, Channel 4, Sky, and uh, out of uh, 67 channels which were required to provide access services, 57 of them met or even exceeded their quotas, and the majority did it comfortably, relatively easily. Uh, and the one we are missing, you know, which was just missing by a few, few percentage, uh, even less than 1%, and it was due, in fact, to some type of uh, technical uh, matters, but, you know, the will was there. 